Hey everybody, it's me, and it's afternoon, and I'm tired, <laughs> but we are going to do some green work today, because if you can't sleep, you may as well just work, <laughs> or at least do fun stuff with the model that you like. So, that is the philosophy for today. David is across the room, but being very good today and working, we're not distracting him too much. And since I'm not trying to paint any lighting effects or sketch style or anything interesting, he'll probably ignore us. <laughs> All right, let's just go down to live scene. Yay! All right, let's get to it. Hey, Numbat, I appreciate you guys coming on over. I mean, I feel bad because, you know, Michael's streaming, I know. I wanted to wait till it was close to the end of his stream before I started up mine. But don't, don't you know, don't feel like you have to uh, abandon, don't, ha don't feel like you have to abandon Michael. You can leave me alone for like 15 minutes. I'll, I'll survive. I'll be here. Um, or you can hang out and watch me put green on this shield. Actually, I want to test fit this arm one more time. Hey, Image, how's it going? Thanks for the double purple heart snumbat. Today is just a really rough day. I tried to sneak a nap in after lunch. I tried to eat lunch quick and sneak a nap in so that I could, uh, let's see here, so that I could be a little bit more spry for the stream. So I have to watch the angle here. I want to really watch kind of how I'm going to do this. Because if I'm going to do it on the flat side of the arm, which I think I am, I think I'm going to have to do it on that side of the arm there. That's That makes sense for the shield anyway. It should be on that side of the arm. So that means that I believe we decided I had to move this hand out a bit and line it up. And I'm trying to figure out if I can, how far down I can move it. So if I swing that out, this is, this is dicey and I probably need some sticky tack. Let me grab some sticky tack and see if I can make this work a little bit better. Sticky tack to the rescue. Sometimes trying to jockey this stuff into position so you know where it is, so you don't make a mistake. Because you really don't want to be putting stuff on with green. Let's see here. Just want to put a little bit of poster putty, a little bit in there so that I can socket this in and use the poster putty to hold the arm in place. So I'm not actually putting the poster putty in the socket because you can get into trouble there where your green or your uh, poster putty gets stuck way up with the pin and then it's a pain to remove. But if you kind of use it jammed between those two armor plates so the pin can still sock it in and you don't, you won't have a, any trouble removing it then. So that's useful. So now I really have to look at where I'm going to put this because I have to watch out. I have to swing this arm wide because I want the shield to go and not impact the leg. Thank you, Chalin. Sea Ballin, sorry. I saw an H. Zombie George, uh, Zombie George's text is overlapping my uh, thing just, just a little bit. So this is pretty good because I want our arm to go over the center of that hole in the shield that I'm going to putty over. It's going to go over her shoulder pauldron, but that's not a huge crisis. I've got to get the arm in the right position that that looks right. It may actually end up going over the crest of the arm rather than the underside. Because the thing about this this um, arm guard, right, is that it's double-sided, right? It's got an up and a down. And originally I was thinking I would be able to rotate it enough that the shield could go along with the bottom side, but that's not going to work. Um, so now I'm thinking I've got to kind of reassess it. It's got to kind of go in a line with the shoulder in order to fit correctly. So I may end up kind of going that way. Her arm's a little tilted, so it probably won't look wrong. I need the straps to go over the forearm to be correctly positioned. But I think, I think this is going to work. I think I'm just going to have to put the arm kind of flat on there, even though it means putting the shield like right down the crest of this. It means the arm, it means part of the arm isn't going to lie flat on this. It means it's going to be kind of peaked. Um, not ideal, but I think I can make it work that way. And I definitely wanted to figure this out before I started doing green work on it. So I got to ask myself now is how far, how far do I want this arm to rotate? 
it really can't rotate very far without totally getting out of its socket and necessitating even more sculpting. I can get away with this gap back here because she's got a big cape on. So the cape actually sockets in right there and it's going to cover that gap pretty well. Um, big, big metal cape. You just know that it's like an old bottle. It's got a huge slug of metal for a cape, right? Hey, Kernigo. What better to turn on while painting than somebody else painting? Yeah, isn't that the way it works, Kyore? Although, actually, I'm sculpting. <laughs> I'm converting. Hey, Gurgi. Afternoon, evening. Yes, it is. It's afternoon, evening, for sure. So it looks like my original plot will not work out that great then, and I will probably need... I won't be able to rotate this arm any more than this and still have it stay in the socket convincingly, but that is enough to allow me to lay this shield flat up against her shoulder, which I wanted. I wanted a couple of contact points here um, so that I could make sure that the shield is really, really firmly on there. So that looks like it will work. So I'm just gonna plan to lay that arm right across that center hole once I've got it um, all sculpted out. And then I will essentially do the strap over the arm to keep the shield on. And I'm gonna just check that position. It means it's gonna go back like that. It means her arm's gonna stick out and it's gonna cover this side of the model pretty thoroughly. But I'm okay with that because otherwise this side of the model is just kind of meh. It doesn't have a lot going on. So, all right, let us progress. We'll take our sticky tack out of there. Uh, sculpting tools are useful for getting sticky tack out of holes too. If you uh, get too much sticky tack in them, you can also take your sticky tack and use it as a kind of a magnet to get that out of there. There we go. There we are. You don't want to leave sticky tack like gluing a model together for a very long time because it will it will definitely stick in everywhere you don't want it, and then it's kind of a pain to dig out of deep places. Alrighty. So one last bit and get that up in there. Need to get our pin in position. It is definitely grumpy at me today. Aha, there we are. All right, so out like that. Ah, it's a little loose in the socket if I do that, but it's not terrible. It's not a terrible fit. There's just a little gap there. I may need to build up the back of the arm guard just a little bit to give it a better surface, and I will need to putty in there. But my pin is um, deep enough, and this is the advantage, guys, of, of keeping a fairly long pin um, as much as you can. If you're going to do something like this, keeping a long pin lets you rotate it better in the socket like this and still have a little bit of pin in there to help uh, adhere it. So, all right, let us, let us figure it out. I do also need to take these reins and pin them into her hand. And that'll be done probably after I green stuff the shield and uh, before I do the strap because I'm gonna want those pretty solid because I'm gonna have to change their position a little bit. They go into her hand like this where they come out of the bottom of her hand. And the horse actually, I did check, does have reins, fancy, fancy reins that she, uh, that kind of lock into the top of her hand. So we've got that to worry about too, yay. And believe it or not, this model has separate stirrups. This is how fancy and fiddly some of the historical models get. And so that's how fancy and fiddly this fantasy model from a historicals company has gotten. Um, so the reins are up here and still sprued and the stirrups are down here. So she actually has stirrups, which is cool. It, it adds a little bit of, eve of realism to the model, right? So I will worry about these later. They are not on the docket for today. The, on the docket for today is getting this shield done and getting that pinned in. So I stole Viking's shield. And for the most part, I managed to uh, slice off these little nubbins. that used, These used to be projections that pinned into the other model's back. Um, and I managed to mostly get them off without taking too much uh, incidental damage off the side of the shield here. Um, though I did probably lose a couple of these little rivets and I might have to replace them. What I'll do is I'll green stuff this in first and then I will, uh, see if I, uh, then I'll prime it and see how my green stuff looks and I'll also fix any rivets at that time. So it'll probably get like three coats of primer on it, all things considered, but it's a flat shield, so it doesn't really matter. Alrighty, let's get some green. Green time. Guten afternoon. 
I am, I am a little sleepy. I tried to take a nap after lunch and uh, it failed. Too much time constraint probably because I had to go to the grocery store today. That's my Tuesday errand. After this week, once we get uh, Twitch affiliate, I will probably go down to just Wednesday streaming unless I want to do a fun ninja stream every once in a while. Um, which I'm always tempted to do actually on days like Friday or, or Saturday, just, you know, kind of get the stream up and just do an hour or something. So you may get ninja streams from time to time. And of course, uh, they'll go on VOD on here and I do need to see about transfer. Actually, I need to make a sticky note about that right now to, uh, save videos. Do, 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 save my videos to YouTube. Save videos to YouTube. If I don't do a sticky note, I will forget. Here, I'll make an angry face at myself. Grr. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, green. So we're doing a very thin skin here. We really don't want to fill in very much of the shield at all. So we need a lot of yellow. And just a little blue. Thank you, Droxer. Thank you for the follow. We are trying to get Twitch affiliate. All follows are awesome. All viewers are awesome. <laughs> You're all pretty much fantastic. Uh, she had no shield at all, Francis. And yeah, the shield belongs to the dead guy that I grabbed. Uh, essentially, I wanted to make her a Valkyrie. So I needed a dead guy. And I realized that I still had a pretty cool 54 millimeter Viking model. And... He, here's he is, he's a Romeo, so he's a uh, historical model. And he has the shield on his back, you see. So I'm going to make him a dead guy so he doesn't need a shield on his back anymore. Because presumably he was actually fighting with it and dropped it. That's why he's dead. So uh, I figured since uh, she's going to be a Valkyrie, I can totally steal a Viking shield. It's totally in character. And uh, utilize it. And that way I'm not wasting any part of the model. We are using all possible parts of the miniatures, right? <sighs> So, yeah, I'm going to make the guy into a casualty model that'll be a little bit more sculpting. A little pretty, uh, actually, much heavier sculpting and conversion work than this is. Because I'm going to have to re-sculpt. His legs are separate from his torso, so that's easy. But I'm sculpting him sitting. So that means I have to re-sculpt the cloth um, below the belt to be, like, you know, laying over his legs and kind of pooling on the side of him instead of all hanging down straight. So I already cut off a lot of it. Which is not fun with a big metal model. But the uh, it's such an old model that it was mostly lead. So it was easier to cut through than most, actually. Very, very old model. So this is a very lightweight, light green, green stuff, as you can see. Which means it's very sticky. Um, but hopefully it will spread out very, very thin. Some people use um, pasta rollers to roll out green into really thin layers, like when they're doing cloth and stuff. I do not have that advantage, so I'm just going to grab a piece of this, about half of it. And I'm going to see how much I can flatten it out just pulling it with my fingers like pizza dough. It's not going to be perfect, but if I can at least get it roundish and more or less flat, and then I can put it onto the surface of that shield and smooth it out, that will be pretty good. So I'm going to see how thin I can get it and try to keep it roundish, which could be easier said than done because it is sticky. And it wants to spread wherever my fingers pluck it and wherever I'm holding it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. But like pizza dough, we want to keep it intact. But we don't have gluten to help us, so we're uh, we're screwed. Um, Paul and Mary Berry of Great British Bake Off would be very disappointed that I could not produce the window pane effect in my uh, pizza dough. All right, so we're getting there. This is pretty thin now. This is uh, this is pretty pretty ah whopper thin. Boop. Please don't stick to the paper. Thank you. Happily, paper is less sticky than my fingers. Yeah, I really like putting shields on models, especially ones that are nice and blank like this, because uh, it gives me the opportunity to freehand. And that part of the model is so kind of blah anyway, since she's facing directly away from the viewer. The back side of the model is a perfect place for freehand because you're not really distracting from the model at that point. You're just giving the viewer something to look at when they're looking at that side of the model. All right, so that's pretty thin. I think I'm going to kind of plaster that down and continue working with it actually on the shield. And this time, this time is a good time for either or both 
of um, Clay Shaper uh, Taper Point, or, or as we call it, Rolly Tool, um, and Giant Spoon. Giant Spoon is probably what I'm going to start with because Giant Spoon is nice and, uh, and heavy and uh, heavyweight, and so Giant Spoon, if I can get him to not stick to this stuff, will be really good for pressing down and moving around the screen and kind of uh, stretching it out gently toward the edge. So you want a lot of water. Let me grab my glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing. Hey, Coops, how's it going? Thank you for joining me, guys. I know Michael's still streaming, so feel free to like just have me in a side window for now. I don't want to take away viewers from Clever Crow. I just wanted to start a little earlier Ah. Yes, it is very hard to get to keep your sculpting tools from sticking to the green stuff, especially when you're putting as much yellow in it as I just did. I think this is partially why some of the sculptors like to um, work with mixing Fimo into their green, uh, because it makes it a little less sticky and more like clay, which I always thought I was going to like. But I think after trying it, um, I think I'm actually better with like either pure Fimo or pure green. Like the, the hybridization didn't, I didn't take to it right away. Um, I may try it again at some point. We'll see. We'll see how much into sculpting I get. I am enjoying uh, doing this guy, doing this stuff with you guys. It actually is pretty fun. So now we got to take a thicker part and I've got to remember that there's a divot in the middle of the shield here that I did not fill in. I just pretty much laid a skin over the top of it. Uh, and trusted to fate. I probably should have taken some extra green and filled in that hole, but we'll see. The center of this is going to be the thickest part just because I'm mostly taking the edges and spreading them out toward this uh, leather hide. The front of the shields were usually leather hides or cloth that was tacked over a wooden base, wooden or metal base, but often wood. Because wood was a lot easier to replace if your shield got broken. And it was a lot easier to find and work. It took a while in history to get big metal shields. It was also really tiring to carry around a giant hunk of metal. I don't know if there ever were. Were there guys? Were there ever? I must. Kite shields. Those big ones that they rested on the ground. Those must have been metal, huh? And that would explain why they were huge and rested on the ground always. Although, I don't know, maybe there were also wood. It just I'm just thinking about like how hard it would be to carry a metal shield around when you didn't have alloys like aluminum. And aluminum wouldn't be very good at stopping an arrow. Must, If there were metal shields, they must have been heavy as blazes. Like, I know there were bronze bucklers and stuff, but... So now I have to try to push this green stuff. This is getting really thin now. But what I would like is to just have enough to score a little bit of a wood pattern into it. Just a little bit. So I don't need a bunch of thick green. I'm going to try to slide some over from the other side. May not quite be able to do it. I just need, I might just have to leave that little bit and just do it with paint. Or come back in with another bit of green. We'll see. I'm not going to push it right now, though. It's pretty wet, and that green wants to skin up, so I don't want to do that. But we're almost, we almost covered it. Mostly wood. That's why I figured, Rax, is like, it's just metal would be too expensive and too heavy um, to fight with. Bucklers were a, a, a uh, different because they were small. So I could see how bronze bucklers were a thing at one point. And I guess wood was pretty good at stopping... A lot of stuff so and just get that in yeah it looks like I'm I'm short on putty on this side so I can take a little bit I've got extra so yeah Pavas is is that the big big uh, kite shield the big ground ground ones that the archers got behind Rax I don't remember this the term yeah Exactly, right, Sibelin? It's a uh, you'd hard, you'd hate to carry it around. Like reenactors know it, man, because they're out there trying to build stuff and they're building it like as lightweight as they possibly can. 
the people who do like realistic reenactment my uh, my ex actually is into viking reenactment actually and uh he built himself an actual shield out of uh, a wood base and uh, i think a leather leather over the top All right, we're getting this, we're getting this. We're gonna use um, that uh, clay shaper to help uh, smooth this out once we've got it. You built one, wow. Hardcore. Did you paint it? Did you paint a cool design on it, Rax? I painted one of those for um, George R.R. Martin. Cause he had, uh, he had some archers and he wanted uh, freehand done on the shields for them they had gotten the archers painted by somebody else and so because george rr R. martin he got jennifer haley to paint one of the shields and me to paint the other uh, it's like far fancier than any viking ever wanted <laughs> or any uh medieval guy ever had i don't know though i mean they had some pretty fancy designs on some of those so Oh, you're in the SCA. Yeah, that explains a lot. Yeah, you guys, uh, I used to have a lot of SCA friends when I was in Madison, Wisconsin. And then uh, there are a fair number of uh, Reaper people who uh, I think Kevin used to be involved. There we go. All right, so we've got mostly skinned. I think I just need, I'm going to take a tiny bit and fix that corner. Oh, cool. Yeah, feel free to put it up on the, do we have an, you can put it up in general on the Anne Discord or you can put it up in the Reaper Discord and tag me. It's always useful. Like, you know, reenactment stuff is very, very useful for paint, miniature painting. Um, Kirill actually looks at a lot of reenactment sites uh, when he does his stuff, because he has a very realistic painting style, and he likes to look at the reenactment, like the clothing and everything, and kind of get ideas for different paint jobs. He showed us a particular, there's a Facebook site that does Viking reenactment um, that talks a lot about auth authenticity. So, all right, rolly tool time. Rolly tool. We still have a lot of water on this, so rolly tool should work really well for us. We don't have to worry about getting this surface perfect, because it's wood, so, you know, it wouldn't be perfect necessarily. Um... But I do want it fairly smooth, and I want most of the tool marks gone. Thus, Rolly Tool is going to be our friend. And I'm just really rolling this across, just rolling it across. And that's what's giving, that's what's taking a lot of these marks down. If I pushed it, I would, uh, I would risk leaving more marks. But by rolling it, I'm able to get a nice smooth finish. It just needs to be smooth enough so that I can paint, sculpt some wood, some wood slats on it. Maybe I'll do that right now. Let's see. What do I want to use for that? Sometimes you just want to use a slicey tool or a pokey tool. It depends on how fine I want my lines. I think I want my lines pretty fine. Let us do, ah, that one's still got a little bit of texture there. Freestanding. Yeah. Hey there, math file. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm hanging out. I'm still sleepy. I couldn't sleep when I tried to have it take a nap. Kiri and I tried to take a nap. She was successful. I was not. Um, so now I am trying to do a green skin over the inside of this shield because we had some uh, parts that I chopped off um, when it was, you know, meant to go on a different model. And uh, it also had a big hole in the middle. So my challenge is going to be to give a little bit of texture and, and present, you know, do some wood boards without punching through this hole in the center. And I may just need to kind of suggest it and uh, be real light with it. This is an example where using like something like Vaseline could be useful. The nice thing is that there's this uh, puddle of water kind of in the middle. So it's definitely going to, let's get this closer. Boom. And let's get it in focus. There we go. So I'm pretty much right at drawing. You can see that I've started, let's see, there you go. See my, see my fine line right there going down. 
I just want a little bit. I just want a little bit of a guide because at this scale, at this range, you really would not see like big, huge divots. That's why technically doing wood grain on uh, like 28 millimeter shields is kind of not realistic. Um, I'm going to just continue with some nice wood slats here and grab some more water. See if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can see the line going from the top to the bottom. And it, and you don't have to be real even here. Like planks often wouldn't have been like perfect. They would have been like reasonably good though, because obviously you wanted your shield to hold together and to not have a lot of weaknesses. But you can be slightly crooked on your lines. And all your slats don't have to be exactly the same width, although close is good. So these are the big boards, and then if I, um, I just want that pretty much. I want that marked out. And then what I can do is, uh, if I would like to, I can suggest some wood grain maybe on the along the edges, or I can just paint it on. Um, at this scale, painting it on, I have an and Discord. I have a um, painting bake. I have my Patreon Discord, Rex. If you are not a patron, then just put it on the Reaper Discord. In is there an off topic on the Reaper Discord for it? and tag me there and then I will see it all right let's see here another yeah we're gonna be careful when we get toward the center again because we've got that hollow area but there we go we got through it so really light touch see my lines are coming out there we go really light touch on this just to make I've got a couple air bubbles here but I'm not too concerned about them could probably tamp some of them down a little bit as I see them. There is always a chance. It looks like here, yeah, here it looks like maybe I got some air in there or maybe there was a piece of yellow that had pre-cured. There's always a chance you get some bubbling. But on a shield, I'm not, I would be much more worried. Obviously, if it was on a face, I'd be like, yeah, but on this, I don't, I'm not real concerned about any small bubbles. If I really want to, I can go in and pop them. And uh, there we go. We got our our boards lined up. Yay, there's our boards. And the uh, irregular texture that I have going on from the sculpting actually kind of works for me a little bit. I think I may puncture this and see if I can smooth out that air bubble. Boop. Boop. There, puncture. Puncture and smooth it out. The problem is if there's water under it, then it will not want to stick. So that may be an irregular part of the shield for right now. Now we will do a little bit more. If you're using a big tool to do um, like board marks like this, then you can get into a little bit of trouble because the edges can kind of stand up. The cuts that you did can have like little raised edges. So uh, you can always go down with a very gentle touch and smooth a little bit after you've got that in. Um, and you shouldn't lose your lines entirely, but it should lay those edges down a little bit. So whether you want to sculpt more texture on this would be very much a question of, you know, am I going to do a wash for this? Am I going to be, uh, you know, relying on something like that, that washes are a technique that definitely are rewarded by the presence of texture, in which case I should do more wood texture. Um, but if I don't want that or I don't care, or I'm planning to freehand wood grain, um, then I should just probably leave it here and not put extra on there. The only exception is, ah, yeah, it's a little lumpy, but it's actually remarkably smooth if you look at it. And it actually does curve along with the shield. Um, so I kind of like it. Like there is a divot in the middle from the, the hole, but I'm not too concerned about that actually. You can always, uh, I don't, I don't even care. Actually, I don't care about it because one, I want the arm to lay flat around, across it. So I'm actually pretty happy that, uh, it's not totally concave. I'm happy it's a little convex. That'll help. Um, and it's, uh, it's a lot flatter than I thought it would be. So it's actually pretty good. Also, remember, I'm blowing this up hugely on your monitor, guys. So in person, there are a couple lumps, and I may address those. Like, there's a lump over here. And most of the lumps are going to be air bubbles. 
So then it's like, can I roll the air bubble gently toward the side without totally wiping stuff out? Or can I like, you know, I might have to redo my cut there because I rolled, I rolled the air bubble out and then uh, lost, uh, lost my uh, shield, uh, sorry, my board, board line. There. All right. So that's pretty good. So essentially I'm just creating lines that are just a little deeper than, you know, then I can do some wood grain, just a little bit of suggestion of wood grain texture, uh, and it'll be finer than these lines. So I won't really suggest it with sculpting. Yeah, I don't really do washes. Uh, the reason, uh, it's cause I used to, right? Cause I, I, I did paint a lot of GW when I was, uh, first learning how to get better Seaballin, but I just find that washes make more work for me. Um, they, uh, they tend to make, you know, I'm, I'm so into color that when I put a wash over surface and it, and it muddies it down and dulls it or darkens it, I don't like that. I have to usually go back and do all that touch up afterwards. And so essentially I realized that for me, washes were not a time saver. Um, they just made things look dirty and then I had to correct that and it always irritated me. So I just stopped doing that. And instead I started painting with washes, essentially layering and just putting my shadows in. Hey, D. Clearman, how's it going? Yeah, right, exactly. Well, I, I, am th I, I don't fall for their evil tricks anymore. All right, so let me see. I don't know if there's any place I can really... There's only one, I think I only lost one rivet really. So I think I'm pretty good. I can always suggest that with paint or put it behind her. Any part that's not all that awesome, I like always put your best uh, your best side forward. So like whatever side of the shield looks a little bit more mucky um, or didn't quite come out right or we lost some rivets, we can put uh, up against the cape and no one will notice. It's, we will be sneaky. Helps to not tell anyone. Nah, there's nobody watching me. Only 27 people. They won't tell. They won't tell. Now, or, they'll, or they'll say, Anne says you can cheat this way. And I'm okay with that. Ah, yum. All right. So I actually got this skin done. Awesome. So now, while we wait for that to set, I almost wish I had my green oven out. I probably, if I keep doing this, I really need to get it out. Um, and let's see. I do see another air bubble. I wonder if I can fix that. The temptation to, to fix the lumpies in the air bubbles. Hey, Motor City Ray. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, we just did some skin skinning on this and uh, some green work to suggest boards, wooden boards on this, so that I can give the give the Valkyrie a shield. And so now, now I'm gonna muck with her arm. I'm gonna actually, I think I'll pin these reins in. They're tiny. That should be a fun pin, huh? Why would we tell on Anne when it's logical? Wait till it's illogical. All right, reins. Here we go. So I want these suckers figured out. So it's time to cut them off the sprue. And I want to be careful because it's a pretty delicate join. So I'm actually going to cut kind of around them on the bottom first. And then, because the problem with a join like this is, is trying to get it to, to go like here without it sliding onto the reins is really hard. And trying to do it this way means you're going to like crimp the reins. So... I usually find it helpful to do kind of a V and cut away a lot of this material and then see what I can do there. And then I can sometimes just take the rest of the sprue off with a knife and it's much cleaner than if I would tried to use the side cutters. Side cutters are really good for plastic sprues, but yeah, I'm worked on camera. Yep. That one zoomed in. Uh, yeah, bases, it depends on what you're doing, uh, Mathophile. I actually prefer, instead of doing washes on bases, I usually prefer to just start and paint my bases a very, very dark brown and work up from there. Uh, rather than starting a mid-tone and then put a wash on it, I want my, I want a lot of contrast. So like for gravel, I'll paint it walnut and then I'll start layering on browns and grays or whatever. Um, the, the, the uh, exception is of course like deserts because they're lighter, so you wouldn't need that dark of a color. But uh, yeah, uh, sculpting tools. Alrighty, good, Corbe, good. 
Excellent. All right, so now we're going to do a really fine pin. Let us first uh, clean off our... Where's my knife? Knife, knife, there it is. Clean off the bottom of our reins. They don't fit in her hand like super awesome anyway, so I'm not... Uh, not I would have had to pin them anyway, probably. So changing the angle of the pin... There we go. So I grabbed it and I just twisted and that was a better, that was better than using the side cutters like straight up. All right. Little tiny reins. Boy, these things are thin. This is, it might be the thinnest thing I've ever tried to pin. Maybe. I guess we'll find out. It's close. It's really close for sure to the finest thing I've ever tried to pin. Just going to try to clean off any little excess metal bits on the end of this little bit of reins. And I'm going to grab a file because I actually want to polish it down a little bit better because there's a mold line because of course there's a mold line. Whenever there's something absolutely tiny and delicate, there of course has to be a mold line down it just to make things difficult. So really I'm just going to use the, the file and just kind of scrape it, rub it across the edges just one way. I'm trying to kind of try to polish those little reins up. There we go. Take the mold line off. Interior mold line, I'm going to have to think about that. I might use the knife. Usually I would. Yeah, that looks good. There's that little, there's a little bit of material in there. So you can use your diamond file. I should use a round one, but I don't have it to hand. So I'm just using whatever file is at hand. Alrighty. That was David popping over open a beer, not me. That's not a beer. <laughs> it sounded like it though. I was like, it was like the beer commercial. It was very, uh, very loud. <laughs> it was funny. I'm still working. You're still working. Yes, you're being good. Don't spread, don't spread bad rumors about me. He yeah, says. Don't sp spread malicious lies. Mathophile, hey, Mathophile said beer time at the same time as I said. So it did sound like one. No, we're just addicted to sparkling waters, I'm afraid. We're both too boring for, uh, well, he's got plenty of beer in the fridge, but it's mostly in bottles. I just, like, save it till after five. It's not beer o'clock here yet, guys. Although it might be beer o'clock later, because I think it's bratwurst night. That's true. I'll probably have a bottle for that, though. Yeah. I have a can, because I only have cans, because I don't keep very much beer in the house. So I have, like, two cans of beer, and that is it. I drink it very seldom these days. All right, just trying to, to have a there we go. So that you can Perfect. Beer onions. Yeah, we do beer, um, beer onions, sautéed onions with uh, with beer uh, for brats, and so I need David to sacrifice part of his beer. It's a good <laughs> Mathophile is convinced that one beer at work is just fine. It's the stigma of multiple beers that you want to avoid. Well. The company oh. does serve them pretty much every Thursday, or, you know, did before we were all exiled. Yeah. Um, it's for my Patreon racks, so it I don't post it publicly. Um, if you join the Patreon, you get the link pretty much. Uh, do, 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 do. But if you are a fan, maybe I'll start. I don't know. I wish... I'm kind of hoping... It would be kind of nice if I could link my streaming to my Discord also, like separate from the Patreon. Although that, that removes a bit of advantage for the Patreon users, and I do want it to be an advantage for Patreon users, so maybe that's not the answer. <clears throat> yeah, it's a Patreon link, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, that's it's a hard call, right? Because it's, uh, it's nice to have the community, but I do like to make it um, a perk for my Patreon peeps. So it is not a public discord. I didn't, uh, I didn't think when I started this or when I started that, that I would, uh, be making Twitch a top priority. So I kind of decided in favor of, uh, my discord being a Patreon thing instead. All right. So there's this little nubbins at the end of this ring. See the little narrow nubbin that I think is supposed to slot into her hand, but it doesn't do it very well. So kind of thinking it's just fine if I remove that in favor of a pin because it is annoying and uh, it really isn't pinnable in its current state. So it means some more green work probably afterward, but I'm going to just slice across the top of this sucker. I guess I could use the side cutter too. Although I find that the side cutter also means that you have to uh, 
clean it up afterwards with a knife anyway. So part of me is just like, just use the knife. So looking at where I want it to be, I want it to be just so I'm shearing off the top of that thin area. There we go. That's about right. It's a little better. I'm going to file it off a little bit to make it flush. Well, a lot of companies have um, solid rules against alcohol, any alcohol at all on the clock. So I didn't understand it. Hey, does Dan, thanks for the follow. All of the follows help. We will hopefully, hopefully guys after Wednesday, we should get Twitch affiliate. That's what I'm hoping. Apparently it, it probably takes Twitch a couple days to process it, but, and to send you the email, but then I can set it up and then we can start having things like follow or like uh, subs and emotes and things like that, which I would like to do. So that's awesome and exciting. And then, uh, yeah, then we can get just a kind of a solid uh, streaming schedule down and maybe a ninja stream here and there. So this is really important now, guys, to figure out, to get your knife blade and make sure it's really sharp at the tip and figure out the, where the center of these reins is. And I think I've got it pretty well. And then to twirl your knife very gently to set that divot in, because that's going to be your guide for your drill. So I've got that little hole, see, in the middle. Now we reach for the drill, the pin vise. This is going to be fun because it's so delicate. So the key here is to make sure, I might even use a fresh drill bit. I wonder if I've got one like really handy. If I do, I'm going to switch to one because when you're doing something this small, you do not want a dull drill bit. Let's see, do I have, yes, I do. Ha ha. For once, I know right where something I need is. This is crazy. I'll pay for this later in Karma. So I keep all my little drill bits in a happy little... This is how they come when you order them 10 at a time. So let's switch. I probably need to switch out anyway because it's been a while. So we'll switch to a new fresh little drill bit. These are number 75s. They are very tiny. I use them for everything. But Glittered Geek. That is an awesome name, but Glittered Geek. Hello, Reaper Miniatures. Thank you for the raid. <laughs> Raid back at you, Valandar. All right. Hey, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, yes. And thank you to Clever Crow for the raid also. We are doing pinning of a tiny thing. Oh, thank you, HM Road Dog. Thank you, all the all the follows. I missed, a, I missed one follow while I was looking at my uh, case. Hello again. Yes, it's, it's Re-Anne. <laughs> It's Anne in the afternoon. Afternoon, Anne. Graz Yeti, thank you. Thank you for all the follows, you guys. You're so awesome. Yeah, refresh your browsers if you want to be on my channel and give me cred. Um, do, do, do. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, get kitty food and you food. I had to get puppy food and me food earlier. Thanks, Valandar. Thanks for the follow. Super awesome. Yes, yeah, so I was just fishing out a fresh drill bit, guys. Because uh, I realized I was going to be pinning something absolutely tiny. Thank you, Iridest. Yeah, this is my private stream. This is what I, I just do if I feel like I want to work on the model that I'm working on and, you know, hang out while I do it. <laughs> Thank you, Garmage. Yay, follows. So let's switch out our pin vise drill bit. So what we did earlier, everybody, is we, um, we actually greened over the inside of this shield and we made um, some boards. Grey Wolf Studio, thank you. We uh, just carved some some board marks into our shields so that we can paint it up um, later. Uh, but I needed that done so that I could position her arm correctly and start working on straps. Rainbow Sculptor, thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. So it seems like uh, seems like I'll be doing a lot of green work on here. I'm actually tempted. Ooh, Moonglooms, thanks. Thanks for the follow, everybody. Yay, Zombie George says thank you. Alrighty, let's see here. Oh yeah, we need to re. We need to do that. Yes, it is me. It's me again, and we're doing pinning, tiny, tiny pinning, which is why I'm switching out my old bit, and I need to actually fold that up in a piece of paper so I can throw it out safely because it's sharp. I like to kind of fold them up into little, in my sticky notes, and then I can kind of fold them over, and it's almost as good as cardboard. There we go. Now it's all safe. Now we can toss it. Now it won't end up on the floor inserting itself in the bottom of my foot. All right. 
So fresh drill bit because we are going really small. All right, uh, I gotta make sure I'm drill I'm tightening this correctly. Gotta make sure that you kind of got it set in nicely and then tighten it down, make sure it's straight. There, awesome. So yay, <laughs> never enough in. Okay, have fun. Have fun, Dragon Eye. Thanks for hanging out. So, okay, I already used my knife to make a little divot in the very center. We are pinning these tiny reins. Tiny reins. Like, this may be the smallest thing I've ever pinned. Because uh, they are meant to fit into the bottom of her hand here. Which, of course, I'm going to have her hand holding the shield. Uh, but they didn't really have a very good connection point, And so I figured it was going to be better to pin them. And since I already have a nice divot in her hand where they insert, I don't really need to worry about that positioning. I just need to put a pin in it. Hey, Loim, thank you. So I use a number 75 drill bit and a 0.51 millimeter wire, just beading wire, brass rod, brass wire. All right, so this is really close to as wide as what we are pinning. This is indeed very touchy. So this would be the kind of thing you'd be doing like if you're pinning um, a new blade onto a spear haft or you're trying to do something like that. So I want to make sure that my... I switched out to a new drill to make sure it was as sharp as possible so that very little pressure will get me maximum returns. Got to set this up. Got to seat it in there. And then it's very important to make sure that it's parallel to the drill. So as you slowly start turning, make sure, and just do a couple of turns at first, and then kind of pull it out and look at what you got and see, see how you look. It's looking okay. I don't think I'm too close to any one side. I may be a little close to this side. You can kind of uh, compensate for that by tilting away from that side a little bit when you start drilling again. You can do this when you're first starting. You can kind of course correct if you are a little bit too close to one side. See how, how like I'm more or less centered, but it's like the hole is almost as big as the reins. So we will very gently and just a little bit at a time. You really don't want to rush this one. You want to use very gentle pressure kind of want to support everything. You want to make sure you're going straight down into the uh, object. You only need a couple millimeters, remember. Just a couple millimeters. Don't have to get greedy. You just need enough to insert a wire that will stick and reinforce this join because this is going to be, knowing how high lead this stuff could be, this is going to be pretty delicate on the model. So sticking a rod down into it actually helps reinforce it and helps connect it reliably so it doesn't break off all the time. So I'm putting very little pressure on this. I'm just kind of turning my bit and slowly drilling. And I'm pulling it out and reassessing, am I, uh, am I doing it right? Right now, yeah, it is. It's distorting this side, this underside, a little bit. It's kind of stretching it. Like I think I'm a little close to that edge. Um, but I think it may work. I'm going to actually go at it at an angle. You can sometimes do this to uh, help yourself. If you go at a slight angle away from that edge, you can kind of, when you're in a sh very shallowly into the divot, you can reposition it a little and then straighten out. And that can help you. It only works when you've just started drilling to go um, and to slightly correct your angle. But you can do it at that point. That's why I go so slow. And I'm constantly clearing threads out of the hole because I don't want anything bad to happen. And then as I get a little deeper and my pin, uh, my hole's a little more solid, you can see how uh, how big the hole is <laughs> around everything. It's like almost, it's almost as big as the reins. Oh boy. Uh, let's see here. Not a ponytail. 
Isn't that a horn? Point tails and horns are also very, uh, very delicate. You can do this with that. These are reins, though. They come out of the bottom of her hand. The pony's tail on this is very large. <laughs> but yeah, this is exactly the sort of thing you would do if you're doing a ponytail. You're right. Like if uh, those, some of those models, there are Reaper models. One of the Sisters of the Blade I can think of has a separate ponytail. So you don't need too much. All right. This is starting to be about two millimeters in, I think, and I can test it. I need to clear all the threads out of the hole. I can kind of look at it. I can line up um, part of my drill and see how far it goes down. Eh, maybe it's only a millimeter and a half. All right. Maybe a little bit more. I got to really look, you can, when it's down this far, you can pull it out and make sure as you rotate it, that it is straight going straight into, or as straight into it as possible. Like at least that it's not at such an angle that's going to punch through the other side. Like it's a little off kilter here, but it's also got more, um, area on this side than it does on that side. So I don't mind that it's a little bit off kilter there. That should be fine. Um, Hey Pendrake. Hey Anki. Hello everybody. So yeah, this, when you've gotten into this much, you can, it'll actually stick and then you can check and make sure. See, I'm a little bit off angle here, but I'm a little bit closer to the edge on this side. So it being, it drilling a little bit more toward that side isn't too bad, especially cause I'm getting very close to done. If it punches through, it's not the end of the world. You, uh, you usually notice right when it starts punching, if you're going slow and you should be with something this little, um, and then you can always disguise it with a little bit of green work. We're probably going to have to do a little bit of green work up next to her hand anyway. So that is uh, where we're at. So let's try. Let's try to get us just a little bit more. Now I can start putting a little more pressure in it because it's pretty solid. But I'm pretty happy because if it if it's stuck to the drill like that, that means that when I put my wire in, it's going to be nice and nice and set. Uh, make sure at this point, mostly I have to make sure I get the drill, the little threads of metal out. That's a pretty good, that's pretty good. And I did not punch through and I have a hole right down the middle, more or less. I maybe have a little bit uh, of extra space on top there, but there you go, guys. Yeah, this is why I keep tiny drill bits around. So let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? Where is our, yeah. Okay. So it's 24 gauge is the wire. I can zoom out and have you guys not be quite so close again. So yeah, I just used a cheapy, cheapy brass rod wire. There's, there's tons of it. I would, it will take me years to run through this much wire. And I always chop off a little bit more than I need. Oh, missed Michael's stream due to life stuff. That's a bummer. I mean, life stuff is life stuff, but still a bummer. Especially because Julie was on. How did um, how did it go, guys? Those of you who come over from uh, Michael's Clever Crow stream, uh, was it cool with Julie? Because Julie is awesome. Like she's been in the hobby for forever. Was it a fun show? Should I go back and catch it? Where is my good stream? Awesome. Fantastic. Julie is great. Julie's one of my favorite people. DRH Design, hey, welcome. Hello, Planer, it's good to see you. Proctor is Proctor. Julie is a treasure and Mike and Proctor is Proctor. That is so true, so true. Yeah, I could watch it later on the recording. I could listen to it. All right, I'm just gonna put a little dabble of glue. I use Zappa Gap on this one because it's such a small area. I want a thinner, a slightly thinner glue for the capillary action. Hey there, comrade Eli. Good to see you. Welcome. I am pinning a very tiny piece of uh, metal. It's the reins. Ah, I am failing to pin a tiny piece of metal. <laughs> ah, bloopers. All right, so let's get a little firmer hold on this, and that will work better. So I've got these pliers. They're uh, needle nose, uh, very, very needle nose. They're actually uh, surgical pliers, I think. They were not cheap, but uh, I do really like them sometimes. When I'm trying not to uh, glue things to myself, they can be very useful. Ah, oh, no, a thread of metal. Ah, wow, it's just like one of those days, isn't it? 
Sometimes these are useful. Come on, come on, come on. I just want it kind of in there before I grab it and try to press it further down and get it firmly seated in there. So we've got our brass rod and our reins, our ends of reins. Come on, get in there. There we go. And I can tell that it's pretty solid if I tap it with my finger and it moves well. So that's good. Now we can cut off. Uh oh, I lost the end of my tip pin vise. Apparently I was turning it too enthusiastically. There we go. Now we can trim off the end. Oh yeah, um, yeah, this is my new thing. It, I actually set it up ages ago, Comrade Eli, because I always wanted to kind of use it for my Patreon, but I just didn't have room in my schedule to really uh, get it going. And then uh, the other week, Justin had something come up and he had to cancel a stream on Thursday. And I was like, well, this is a good opportunity. So I just went ahead and started. And once I started, it was like, now I should just get Twitch affiliate. So that's what we did. We've done a couple streams a week ever since then. Um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays right now, and I'll probably go down to just Wednesdays because Tuesdays is a pretty full day for me otherwise, um, after we get affiliate. But yeah, affiliate lets people sub and it gives us like emotes and stuff. And then that's kind of cool. So, so that's my goal right now. And I think we have enough follows. And so all we need is the number of streams and the number of hours. Um, you need like seven streams in 30 days and this is our sixth. So we'll do one tomorrow at the same time. All right. So now... We need to figure out. I'm going to pull these reins. I want them to kind of go more inward. Normally, I believe they're supposed to go straight down. But since she's going to have the shield on her arm holding the reins, I want the reins more to go in. Um, be kind of flipping inward so that they don't interfere with the shield at all. I want them to go straight down. Uh, so we will drill into her hand. It really doesn't matter. Uh, she's got a nice, like... Um, hole already there kind of to seat this. So I just need to really drill it in so it fits the wire. And then we can fit that in and that should be perfect. Yes, Julie is awesome. Yeah, Comrade Eli. So this is kind of my channel to work on my own little projects. So I'm working on here. Let me zoom out and show you guys because there are some new people. So we can show you guys. She is a paladin, but I'm doing her as a Valkyrie. So we are converting her a little bit, just a bit. I had to do a lot of filling and sculpting on her gigantic war horse. You can see from my hands, that this is a very large horse. Um, so we did a lot of green work on him. We had to putty his whole belly. I actually did some, uh, some extra hair on the tail of the horse and filled gaps and some extra, uh, hair on the mane as well. So a little bit of real sculpting. And then I decided I wanted her to have a shield because a lot of the, the thing with this model is the action is really on one side of it. Um, so really the, the best pose of it is here, but then there's nothing really going on on the backside. And so I thought if I gave her a shield, I could put some really fancy freehand and make that part of the model still fun to look at. Um, so that's what we're doing right now is we're giving her a shield. And uh, the model is Zorabeth Morning Mist. It is here. And it's from, uh, I always have the box up. It's from Andrea Miniatures. They mostly do historicals, but they also have the Warlog Saga line when, and that's fantasy. So that's her. And I thought that doing her as a dark Valkyrie instead of a paladin because of the wings and everything would be kind of cool. Um, she is sculpted by a really cool sculptor who, if you have Walking ever looked... Blockers. Yes. I've got it right on my box. Oh, I thought you were... No, I've got it right on my box to show people. I thought you were searching for the name. No, no. So he works for Black Sun. So if you've ever looked at Black Sun Miniatures, which has some amazing stuff, uh, he sculpts for them. And he also sculpted a lot of these Warlord Saga models for Andrea. So Joaquin is, uh, is a pro and he does amazing stuff. And David is painting a fantastic model from him, which kind of inspired me to drag out this old metal behem behemoth and uh, actually wrestle with it. Um, it's been a long time since I worked on a huge mounted metal model. Um, they discussed owlbears, buses, scale creep, griffins, how Tom Meyer discovered green stuff. Awesome. That's a fantastic story. I have not heard it for many, many years. And the barbecue sauce incident. Oh, no. All right. Yes. Well. <laughs> That's Proctor. <laughs> so, uh, so what does Julie have to say about scale creep? Actually, I should go watch the show. I should just go watch it. Scale creep is such an interesting thing because it seems like everything keeps getting bigger in our hobby. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to essentially look at what is a, um, a logical angle for the reins to be coming out of her hand. Cause you know, as we hold things, they don't come out straight down. Really. They tend to come out at an angle, right? Like as we hold things in our hands. So it's likely that these reins would not come out like straight down with her hand. They'd come out at a bit of an angle. So when I'm drilling, I want to remember that. And I want to be going up into her hand accordingly. So really I want this angle so that it's more in line here. This angle doesn't make sense because then the reins would be like there. We want the reins to be over the top of her hand. So, and I'm probably going to have to do some putty work there too. Um, but yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like a fun stream. I'll have to, I'll have to go watch it. So I'm going to go on an angle. I'm going to just use the socket that was originally made to be there. I'm going to go very, very slow, but a little bit faster than I did with the reins because this is a thicker um, area and it's already got a nice starter hole drilled into it. So that's pretty good. I'm probably going to have to do some work. I am uh, somewhat uh, drilling uh, impinging on the back of the hand here just a little bit and getting some extra making a little dent here with the with the drill bit but i'm not too concerned about that because i want the reins to come out of the hand and lie flat in that area anyway so here let's get closer where's my zoomies i need zoomies scale creep is because the sculptors all got older and the painters wanted more detail yeah yeah well i don't know comrade i mean this 54 millimeter i'd still consider her a miniature you using 54 is that weird cross scale um, 72 millimeter and bigger, you really highlight it and shade it much more like, like a big model. Um, because it's big enough at that point to cast realistic shadows. But when you're at 54, this is kind of the in-betweeners is the 54s. You still have to overemphasize a lot of your shading and highlighting on a 54 millimeter model. I would still consider it a miniature. Um, when you start getting, uh, bigger, bigger than 72, then they start being more like bigotures, <laughs> megatures, uh, or, or just models as people call them, you know, at that point it's a one sixth scale model, you know, or one tenth or one twelfth. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. And, and definitely people kept wanting more detail, right? Because when you're painting it to be your character, you don't want a 20 millimeter model. You don't want a 25. You want enough cool details on it, you know, that it looks cool. Right. So I can totally see that. I can totally see that. And, uh, and yeah, sculptors, although now I've got to say ZBrush has totally, uh, kicked that right out the window because sculptors got older, but then they got ZBrush. So now they can sculpt micro again because <laughs> they just blow it up. <laughs> as Bobby Jackson says, I just blow it up. I just zoom in. Which is actually, if you think about it, pretty darn awesome, guys. Because the sculptors are getting older. I mean, the the original, like, you know, the guys who have been in the industry for forever are getting older. Um, and the fact that this tool, ZBrush, lets them regain, like, essentially work with if you're losing some motor control or you've got arthritis or you've got something else going on, ZBrush helps you moderate that, right? And actually, I think Jason Weeby stuff, like, the stuff that Jason is doing now is, like, some of the best stuff I've ever seen out of him. Um, and, uh, I just, um, it makes me very excited. I think that Bobby's doing amazing work too. And Jean, everybody, um, and then you get into brand new sculptors like Christine Van Patten, where, you know, she's just, just in leaps and bounds become really good, really fast. It's just such a great tool. Alrighty. So I'm looking at this and I'm looking at, and I'm remembering that I want to kind of turn the reins a little bit. But this will work, actually. This will work just fine. Um, I think it's going to be a good angle. I think it's going to... I might have to shave down the reins a little bit as they come up toward the hand. We're going to see. I need to drill it a little bit deeper, I think. We've got about a millimeter and a half, but I like it. I like a good two millimeters. It's not really necessary to go deeper than that to seat a good pin, in my opinion. Especially not if you're going to use some green stuff to kind of reinforce it. And if it's in an area that's not really going to be handled, um, which this is going to be on the inside of the shield. So hopefully there's not going to be anything that's going to hit these little reins unless the shield takes a hit. And then I'm kind of, you know, then things are going to get dicey. But uh, hopefully I can also pin the shield in and contact that in a couple of areas and make it as indestructible as a giant metal model ever gets. 
even a blind owlbear finds a hobbit every once in a while. <laughs> That's Michael. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see here. We got yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, that's good. That's nice and solid. Like if I can ding it with my finger, and it's pretty solid, that's that's a good sign. That's what I do. That's what I tend to do is I'll like ding it, and if it like holds really nice and firm, then I'll be like, okay, that's enough. And that's about till me two millimeters in, maybe even just a little bit under. Um, I will actually go in with my drill and make sure that I've cleared out all the little threads of metal because uh, you always get some of those little threads hanging around. So really what you want to do there is just insert your little drill bit and just kind of wiggle it back and forth and pull it out and kind of clear away the answer, the uh, area. So now I can trim this down a little bit, just a little with my side cutters and we can insert it. That was Bobby from the chat. Yes, that would be Bobby. Bobby and uh, yeah, Bobby and, and uh, Proctor are a uh, unique uh, interactive pair. Let's just put it that way. They can get downright naughty sometimes. That was my best Sandra Garrity voice. All right, there we go. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna look at it. It looks good from this angle. Does it look good from this angle? Yeah, pretty well. Um, I may I may have to shave it just a little because it is pretty clunky. I mean, her hand isn't big enough really to be holding these suckers. So if I uh, if I just shave down the side a little bit, that will help. I got to see if I can wiggle it and maybe push it in a little bit further. Usually it'll go in a little farther than you think it will. Um, there we are. So that's pretty good. Let me test that now. Let's see how they look. We will insert our uh, arm into the socket, which we already have pinned, and then we will kind of swing it out a little bit because that's what you're going to do. And actually, that's perfect because as I swing her arm out, her hand goes up in the air and the reins would swing down. So this is actually, I think, a good pose. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be about right. I can always bend them a little bit if I have to, but I think that's good. So... Yeah, these are the reins um, coming out, and there are actual reins. Like, this is a scary, scary model, Pendrake. It's uh, so horsey. Has reins. And he has stirrups coming off of his saddle. Boink. So this is how persnickety this model is. There are, indeed, stirrups, actual stirrups that come down from under the saddle and there are actual reins that you attach to the horse's mouth and that go up to her hand. So the reins are, are fancy schmancy and they have little tassels hanging down from them. I'm not a big fan of the way the tassels are sculpted so I may actually re-sculpt the tassels. I haven't decided. It depends on, depends on how much oomph I've got at that point. Although I am tempted. I am tempted. So yeah, so the reins go... Let's see here. I really don't want to take them off yet until I'm ready to work with them, but they kind of, the little crescents go down there on the horse's head and go back up toward her. I'm probably going to have to lengthen one. Um, I can tell that right now. I'll probably have to use a bit of wire or green or foil to lengthen one that, so that it goes up over the top of her hand. Um, they both technically have to come up and meet at the top of her hand, so I'm, I'm almost certainly going to need more room. Like, even just looking at how far or how unfar, should I say, uh, the reins go. You can tell right away that you're going to need, because when she comes in here, we're going to need more length. Let me see. These big models, they just, and especially because I'm moving the arm out of position, right? So on this side, maybe the reins would be almost... So they go in right about there. Yeah, the reins on this side are going to be fine. Um, they're going to go up just fine because this rein is the one that we're dealing with. And her arm is going to be right up here, so it's going to be long enough to go up and hook over the top of her arm. But the other rein is going to need lengthening to get all the way across the horse's neck. Uh, so, well, at least one of the reins is, is workable. But yes, it is kind of crazy, isn't it? The amount of detail. 
why did I decide <laughs> to do this mini? <laughs> well, you guys are certainly seeing how to deal with a gigantic metal piece of, of, of uh, you know, miniature. So as we continue to work on it, the Odyssey will continue. And also the question is, right, when do you put everything together? Now with the rain, let's, I'm probably going to actually wait. I'm trying to think. What I will likely do is I will at least pin the heads. Actually, they've got pegs, so they do actually peg into the... Uh, hypothetically, they peg into the the horse's bridle, but they're not very... The hole isn't very deep where they peg in. So I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to do some stuff with that. Probably do holes and pins. Oh yeah. They're, they're pretty anal. No, no question. Pendrake me. I'm just going to shape these suckers so that it suggests the right amount of tension. And then I'm going to augment what they are. I, I might use foil. I might use, I don't like using foil. I'd rather use green. Um, or use like a little thin strip of like cardstock paper to come off and then build it up with green. I'd rather do something like that. I find working with brass foil, uh, brass sheeting is difficult. Um, lead foil, I just don't like to work with lead. Uh, some, the, some of the best foil to work with, and I already actually have some laid aside for a banner, is um, wine bottle foil. Uh, when it's the nice thick... You know, it's hard to find it. Some of your screw tops right now, right? Um, but when you can find it, that stuff makes great banner foil. It's really easily shaped. It's smooth. You can prime it, paint it. It works really well. Um, but I, I don't have that much of it. So we'll see. We'll see. I may decide to go green just because it'll... Um, I guess I could just do a wire and do some green. But these get very thin. Like, look at how thin these reins get, guys. So we're going to have to figure out something. We're going to have to figure out some way to do this. And the answer may well be to use cardstock or, or thick paper and, uh, and build out one of these reins so that it's longer. So, yeah. I just want them to, to look cool and dynamic and correct. I want them to meet up with her hand like they should. And I want them to be straight and have the amount of tension that they need. But I should be able to do a lot of that just with the metal. Because uh, really, reins, when it comes down to it, you know, you just need it. You need to figure out where it's laying across the horse's neck and bend it accordingly. It's, the problem here is just that the, there's, you know, hair here. And so if you're bending it around the hair that's standing up, then it's like, well, wait a minute. So you almost, at that point, want it down on the horse's neck. But I don't know that that's the right angle, right? Because if it lays through here, then that makes sense. And it does make sense maybe that she'd be pulling more on this side of the head. Hey, Echo Side, thanks for following. Um, so yeah, so when we get to that discussion of how to make this look right, then we'll talk more about that. Is There's definitely a consideration here where it just won't look right if we go certain places with these reins. So the, she may be neck reining down here, and we may just have to put it through this hole between the saddle and the mane, because otherwise it would be pressing down the mane, and the mane wouldn't be doing all these cool little pirouettes. Uh, so yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, some of the North Texas figure guys do go pretty crazy with it. I think I should be able to do it pretty easily with green and maybe paper. We'll see. We shall see. You can also reinforce paper with white glue, um, which helps give it more plasticity. And that might also be a trick that I use. I haven't used it for a long time. It's been a very long time since I went there. Uh, so yeah, Giant Horse and I are going to settle down. So let's see where our green stuff is at. It's pretty cool in this room, so I don't know that our green stuff is set up. Yeah, it's still a little tacky. You pet it. You just pet your green stuff to figure out if it's ready. <laughs> ah. Happily, I had horse uh, horseback riding lessons when I was a teenager, so I do remember some of that. Um, no, a giant horse is not a relation to bad horse. Hey there, Rathmore. How is it going? So we're, uh, we just did a bunch of green work on the inside of my shield to set it up so that I can uh, sculpt some straps. Uh, for this arm to go onto the shield. Uh, and we also pinned, but did not glue in yet, because actually I don't want to glue it in yet, guys, because I'm going to be doing some green work on the arm. Um, we uh, pinned in the, the ends of these reins uh, that she has in her hand. So now I can pull these out, and I'm going to leave the pin in them, and I'm going to put them in. I've got a plastic baggie to essentially control all the little parts of the model that I am not currently working with so they don't get lost. And they will all go back in there so that I do not lose anything. I could use a smaller bag, but the big bag is hard to lose. 
So, all right, good, excellent. So now we can just work with this. I remember where the reins go. That's not gonna be a problem. Now I need to figure out what kind of strap I want over her arm or if I want two straps. Technically for a shield, the problem is that technically for a shield, you should have a strap in your hand and a strap over your arm. But she's got reins in her hands, so I don't think she's going to actually have both both hands. Uh, I think she's going to be kind of having the, sl the shield slung over her arm until she dismounts, and then she grabs the other strap, and then she can fight. Uh, I think that's, that's probably the way that it would happen. So... So probably two straps then, maybe one over her wrist and one over the the broad area of her arm because it's over the, over the muscle, you know, where she'd probably have that strap. So it'll go over the upper part of the pauldron here. Um, well, it's going to go over that side, but, and now I need to ask myself, am I going to shave down the pauldron? Because if you look, if you zoom me in, zoomies, um, it is triangular. So what I have to ask myself is, am I going to shave this down? I can. It's going to be flat up against the shield. It's never going to come off. Uh, so if I want it to lay better on the shield, I could certainly do that. In which case, I probably want to look at the angle of these, the little wrist guards, which are actually the things that protrude the most, and kind of decide how to slice it down or file it down uh, based along this line. Because the shield's going to be flat up against here. So... Let's see, what time is it? Oh, hey, it is actually time. So, okay, what we will do then is uh, I'm going to wrap it um, because I don't want to start any green work on this. I want this to be set, uh, and then we can patch any little parts that we need to, or I can just uh, kind of look at it tomorrow and see if I have to adjust anything. But I don't mind if it's a little bit of a, a rough shield. So we'll let that set, and we will. I'll resume tomorrow and uh, do straps. That's what we'll do. We'll jump right in, guys. We're going to jump right in. No fear. Um, actually, Rathmore, this is a shield from an entirely different model. I decided that I wanted her to have a shield. She does not actually have a shield in real life. Uh, so this is, in fact, a conversion. Uh, I stole the shield from the dead guy that uh, she's going to be over. So dead guy is... Wait, wait. Let's zoom out. Dead guy. Dead guy. So I had a Viking uh, who is the correct uh, scale. And since I wanted to make her a Valkyrie... It was this guy. So I'm stealing his shield to put on her because he's dead. He doesn't need it anymore. Fancy. Yeah, see, this is the fancy stream, Rathmore. This is the no fear stream. This is a stream where Anne just bludgeons the model and sees what happens. <laughs> Trying to do, like, like heavy conversion stuff. This is the kind of stuff I do for competition pieces. That's the only, like, the only time I'm really... Uh, inspired to do this sort of thing is when I'm like, when I want the, sh when I want the model to have cool factor and I see a way that I can make it have more cool factor and it's a lot of work, but I want to do it anyway. And it's a lot like my Cersei model, which actually I was just thinking I should work on on stream also, because then I actually will get her done <laughs> at some point. Um, good. yeah. Cause the, the only thing stopping me is, show her off. yes, I'm going to get her. Hold on everybody. I won't, I won't sign off yet. I'm going to hang on and I'll show you a pretty mini. Some of you have already seen her in progress. Oh no, who's Apollo? Uh, Sacker Scorn. Sacker Scorn? Sacker Scorn. Yes, that. So, let's let's raise this up a little bit. Raising. You can see the sleeping dog in the corner. All right, so this model, which some of you may have seen in um, Aaron Hartwell working on at ReaperCon last year. Uh, I was bad and did not finish mine. We were going to paint the same mini. But this is because I got way too involved, because I really like this mini, and I wanted to paint her as uh, Cersei, um, the sorceress from Greek mythology, not the Game of Thrones character. So I decided that I wanted to paint her really dark, Aegean Greek skinned, and do a transparent cloth effect, and give her glowing kind of yellow eyes, because she's supposed to be Helios' daughter. And then I decided that it wasn't enough... Uh, that I didn't like this hand at all, and so it had to go. So I chopped off the hand and mutilated everything and put a, you know, a green support over it so I could re-sculpt the cloth, which I haven't done yet. And then I figured out that I wanted that hand to be holding a Greek drinking vessel, so I actually sculpted a hand. I actually sculpted a hand. And, uh, and the hand actually works, so really I just need... I need to carve out more of this resin so that I can attach the hand right there. And essentially then the hand is kind of draping off, kind of dangling off to the side and she's dangling a cup from it. Um, 
What is my timeline for the mini? Rathmore, these, these are my own projects, so infinite. I can spend as much time on it as, as I want to get it done right. Which is my favorite timeline. Because then I can relax and have fun. So let me show you Cersei's drinking cup. Let's see. I just got it started, so I, I got a, a, a big drinking Greek drinking thing. It's got a little base there. It's got little the little um, I plastic carded the handles so I could put them up top and green them on. Um, and then I'm gonna do probably freehand on the interior. Um, yeah. So this is the drinking cup. So it pretty much dangles off of her fingers, uh, so that the uh, so that it kind of rests against her hip down here, so it rests below the model. So at this point, I'm seriously changing the dynamic of the model, right? Because her hand is up here, the cup is dangling down here, and now the model's suddenly a lot taller, right? So you're changing the entire look of the model at that point. Um, she also has an owl, which I did conversion work on. Get in there, hand. Um, and now it is a great horned, or it's an eagle owl now instead of a, a fancy little, it used to be a happy owl. It used to be a, a nice owl. And I made it a mean owl. <laughs> um, hold on. Ah, I'm just going to drop everything. Don't mind me. Okay. Oh, there she is. So it used to be a happy little owl. And I made it into an angry aggro owl. Because Cersei would have an owl. Cersei was identified with all sorts of beasts. If you don't remember from the Odyssey, she was the, uh, the half-god uh, sorceress who uh, turned Odysseus' men into swine. Because they deserved it. I've always liked her as a mythological figure, and when I saw this Athena figure, I realized that I could paint it as uh, Circe instead, because uh, Circe has been pictured with mostly with wolves, cats, and uh, boars, uh, most of the art, but she also is often pictured with owls or hawks, so she was gen generally affiliated with animals. So what we did here is I pretty much kept the owl. I resculpted the owl's face to be uh, a horned owl instead of a uh, little happy owl. Uh, let's see, where am I? Oh, there it is. I'm trying to get the right angle here on the pegs on the feet. There. I think we're getting there. Anyway, so she's the owl is kind of like crouching more on her. And uh, whereas the original sculpt has Athena kind of going, Aw, pretty little owl, I love you. This is more like... Uh, She's uh, looking off to the side like, you can eat his face in a moment, <laughs> which is what I wanted. I really wanted, yeah, she's definitely, Cersei's a powerful figure. I mean, she pretty much, uh, she lets Odysseus live because, you know, apparently he was hot and all the girls liked him. But uh, I wanted definitely her to be a more aggressive figure. So, which is kind of funny um, because uh, her arm goes across her chest and... She's essentially where she would normally be petting the owl. Instead, she's going, no, no, just wait a second. Just wait a second. <laughs> yeah, owl joke. So, yeah, so that's my, that's my Cersei. And uh, she really is like, it's a shame that I put her down because I'm, you know, I like her quite a bit. And I have a lot more ideas now on how to tackle her and to tackle the sculpt especially. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. You guys are really good for uh, inspiring me to uh, tackle very difficult projects. So who knows when we've got uh, this one set up and uh, getting started. Maybe I'll take a break every once in a while and work on Cersei because I do. I would like to uh, to finish her. David would like to see me finish her because yeah. I've been working on her for ages and I still love her. She's just she is another model that got very, very um, elaborate. Because I really liked her, and so I wanted to do all these changes on her. And then I got in over my head on the hand, and then I just lost oomph. Uh, that was about when uh, I was getting ready to move and everything. A little bit before that. I think I was... Were we shifting projects? I don't remember. There was just... I realized I wasn't going to get her done for ReaperCon. I put her aside, and I didn't really touch her after that. That's the problem with deadlines sometimes, when, when it's a model that you really like that you really aren't trying to do to a deadline. You just, you know, you happen to have a competition you want to enter it in. And and that's the great thing, you know, is, is those deadlines can make you finish stuff. But then it also is kind of a letdown if you've taken too much on and you don't finish it, right? It kind of like, you kind of get all sad about yourself for a little while. Um, so one hopes that uh, I can get over that and uh, 
maybe you guys will help me keep uh, start working on her again. Because I really do like her. I have very ambitious ideas on what to do with her. I'm not done. Like, the drinking cup isn't the end. <laughs> and the hand. And all the rest. I still... I originally wanted to give her a lion. And I still want to give her a lion. And that would involve a scratch sculpt. That would be following in Michael Proctor's steps. And uh, choosing a lion as my first scratch sculpt. But it seems a pretty good subject. So, there. So, alright guys. I'm going to let you all go. I got to let the little Kiri outside. It's time for her afternoon out. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the stream and uh, that you will come back and hang out tomorrow at the same time. So it'll be uh, 4.30 to 6 uh, central time. And uh, yeah, and hopefully tomorrow's stream will get us over the seventh stream and over 500 minutes and then we'll get Twitch affiliate. Yay! And that'll make me super happy. So, cause it's been, it's been a lot to like put extra time into streaming in addition to all the other things I'm working on right now. Um, but yeah. Okay guys. Well, have a good one and, uh, yeah, have a, have a chill night wherever you are and, uh, or a chill morning if it's uh, that side of the world and we will see you again tomorrow for Reaper. Uh, if nothing else for Reaper pro tips. Yes, indeedy. Oh yeah. Internet outage. Ugh. Yeah. That sucks. Not bad. I, I feel it. Yeah, laters, guys. Have fun. Let me get my thing set up. And yeah, there we go. Whee!